Hi, I'm Marina from Props and Follies and I'm back with another tutorial on how to change or always her stuff. And this time for the summer, I'm going to change this little dress. I actually really like it, but it is a little bit boring. So for starters, it needs taking up. And when something needs taking up, it also means that I gain a little bit of fabric that I can use around the neckline. And I've got a really nice neckline plan, so let's get started and see how it's done. So let's get started. Let me show you how it's done. Um, the first thing you noticed when you saw me in the dress was that it was way too long. So I'm going to use uh, what I cut off here at the bottom and then I'm going to create a neckline with that. So let me just cut it off and that would be about seven or eight centimeters. So I'm using my tape measure here again that has got this little metal plate on it and that makes it so much easier to just measure it although I can hardly see mine anymore so hang on it's right there so I want to cut off eight centimeters but I need a little bit of seam allowance so I'm going to go to seven just mark seven on it <laughs> I can't see it anymore and I can mark it with my textile marker and this marker if you're just starting to sew it does disappear again that way you can mark anything as you go along and it will just disappear and it's so much easier to literally draw on your clothes not so easy when you're working with black <laughs> then you should use white Taylor's chalk maybe right so now i'm just going to rigorously cut this off and i'm going to have enough here to do my binding for the top and there we go and now i've got this strip here left over and i'm going to use that for the neckline which is really great it's actually quite a lot of it and i might even use it as it is with a feature um, of the stitching and just sew it on so it still looks like the original. Let's try that. That might look really really nice. The first thing now is to finish off the um, hem here. So what I'm going to do is quickly overlock it all the way around and then I'm going to stitch it down twice. You can also use a twin needle if you like. In that case, you don't need to overlock it. So if you haven't got an overlocker, you can use a twin needle and it will neaten it up on the underside. So you just put this under now, just a little word for the Brother 1034D lock. For me, I always set it all on three and then the last one goes a little bit higher. For Jersey, that works really well. and you've got a knife here so some of you um, might not need any you know advice here but you can see that little plate and if you line up with that just a little bit over it'll cut off a little bit and be perfect the next step is to just iron this up three centimeters and if I've done this here like oh I've just overlocked it in the wrong direction just snip it and perfect you can use your tape measure with a metal plate as well I always use that it's a really nice one you need a new one <laughs> go all the way around for your top stitching you've got two options you can either stitch it from the fabric underside or from the top side sometimes stitches are much much nicer when you do use the top side facing up right so in this case though because if you're a beginner and you're not sure you might slip off i would stitch right in the center where you can see that stitching line it's also good practice just on there and then we can do a second stitch from the other side from the top side of the fabric so i think that's probably easiest to do I'm going to stitch right in the center of the overlocking now or the serging and you can see the stitch line there and I'm trying to like marry those up and follow that and it's really really good practice so try to stay on that line don't forget to reverse your stitches and start stitching on your 
side seam or somewhere there don't start with stitching in the front you can always line it up here as well that's your inch or your 2.5 centimeters exactamundo I'm going to stretch it slightly so it makes it a little bit easier to sew because it's jersey. I line it up with the edge here. Make sure that you have got a little bit stretch on here. It depends, of course, what kind of jersey you've got. Not all jerseys react like this one. This is a polyester jersey with lots of lycra, so excellent to do this there's no problem doing that at all if you had a really lightweight one you wouldn't want to stretch it because it would curl up here and then you'd go no marina said and it doesn't <laughs> work so i'm going to do this all the way around and don't forget to lock in your stitches and we're done and you can see that I've got lovely stitching here it is really nice it really depends what kind of sewing machine you've got a cheaper machine obviously will not look as even as this really brilliant puff machine but um, well now we're going to do the second stitch and we're going to do that foot width next to the stitching line that we have already got and we're doing it from the top side of the fabric so put this back underneath your sewing machine and line it up with your presser foot and then you lock in your stitches and we go around one more time. Nice and steady, your eye is just on that corner here and your stitch line is there and you just line those up. Need for speed. The next thing is to obviously iron it again and then our hem is finished. It's a really nice way to do a hem actually on a jersey dress. Very simple all. Now I'm just going to press it really nicely. Lots of steam, always lots and lots and lots of steam. Ooh, very nice. Now we've got a hem done. I'm quite happy with that. Um, we can get on to the fun part at the top that we have all been waiting for. I had a little break and when I checked my footage, it just hadn't recorded the last five minutes. I'll tell you what, <laughs> no happy. So if you just look at this, I'm just going to explain it again. Um, I've just chosen where I wanted to go to, bearing in mind that it's going to come up at the tire like it is here. And so um, I just went round, so it's a little bit wide on the shoulder because it was really close to my neck. I don't want this to be super big because I haven't got um, a really wide piece of fabric that I can put in there. And then for the back, what I'm doing is I'm just taking it from this point, but not going quite as low. I don't really want that. I want it to be slightly higher here, especially if I'm on the beach. I don't want to get <laughs> a sunburn on there. You can take the one side once you've cut it down to there and then you just move it over to that bit and then you cut the other side so that you know that they're both exactly the same and now i can just cut this evenly to the other side and now i've got my lovely neckline. There are literally like a million ways and really complicated ones to work out how much jersey you need for your neckband, right? What length does it have to be? The quickest way to measure that is just to measure where it's going to end on your neckline. So have a look down here. So if your neckband is like two centimeters, say, yeah, it would come to there. So if you measure from up here, all the way around with that two centimeter distance I've got 36 centimeters so that will be my front 36 might want to write this down but not with this pen because it disappears um, 
You got anything to write it on? I'm just going to take a bit off the cloth here. And I'm going to write down 36 so I don't forget it. And then I'm going to do the back and I do exactly the same. I'm coming in now where it would go to, right? From this point, and I'm going to like pull that there and there and there. And then to roughly to that point, and that would be 24. So if I add those up, I get 60. So I need a length of 60. And you always have a bit of seam allowance. It's not a bad idea if it's a little bit tight, but not too tight. So I'm going to make it a length of 60. A really easy way to do this neckband is to just use the hem that you've got anyway. It's really nice and firm. And if you're a beginner sewer, that's really easy. So from my front skirt, I got my 60 centimeters out in one. And then what I can do is just cut along here. Um, I'm not going directly on that edge, just a little bit next to it. And that'll give me like the perfect length here to do this. This is going to be great. Super. So I can chuck the rest into the bin now, out of the way. And I've got my neck band. Look at that. And it's actually really nice and sturdy to work with. I'm going to join this neck band. Now this is not going to be super pretty, of course, on the inside because it's just like that. But that really shouldn't, um, you know, for uh, this DIY, this is absolutely fine just to do it like that. And then you just join it with your sewing machine. I've just done that. I've just sewn straight across it, really easy. Um, just a foot width, doesn't need to be a centimeter. And now instead of like just leaving that like that, I'll turn it over and I top stitch it from either side and that will give me really flat edge. And it's not gonna fray. You don't need to worry about finishing this off. Now I'm going to just sew across here from both sides. It looks really good and it's very simple. When you are putting in a neckband, the best thing to do is always to divide your neckband up into quarters but you can only really do that if it's the same all the way around. In this case it's of course not quite so I'm going to have to take my top and do my quarters in a way that is easy for me to see where everything needs to go. I put my shoulders on top of each other and then I snip my center front, tiny little snip, not too big, and I snip my, oh, I don't need to snip it, I've got a seam here, but if you don't, you want to snip that bit. I've also marked the center here of my band and now I'm just going to put it on right sides facing and I'm starting at the back and my little trick for getting this in you know I've got to hold in a lot here is to just simply stretch it like where it needs to go and then you march your fingers towards the middle pressing down obviously grab where it wants to go and then you just pin that together like so simple yeah it's quite a bit here so now we're going to check whether we've pinned it in all right and the way to do that is to see whether your center front which you snipped if you go in half you need to just check that you have even amount of stretch on both sides so that not one side is massively stretched and the other one isn't massively stretched now we're going to sew this in I'm going to sew this in on the sewing machine first and um, it's always easier to sew from the inside and because we are definitely always sewing on the bit that's easier to sew on I am going to turn my piece inside out so when I'm on the sewing machine I can sew on my neckband. When I stitch this in I don't use a jersey stitch. The jersey stitches really are only important when you have a waistline and there's really stretch on it. There isn't any stretch on this, um, hardly any. So what the machine does automatically will be good enough for this. So I use a standard stitch, just a normal straight stitch to bring this baby home. <laughs> so um, you want to reverse your stitches, of course. And then I'm going to sew one centimeter seam allowance. 
all the way around. This is really, really easy to do. I have to say it's great. And I actually find that although I said one centimeter seam allowance, I'm more looking with my eye on this side as well to make sure that the distance stays the same. And for me, that's just easier, but you can do wherever you feel comfortable. Just keep stretching it and sew all the way around. and that's my neckline I think that is quite nice see if I stretch it a bit more and almost the, those um, gathers here come out and once I've pressed this it'll be perfect and what I'm trying to do with the overlocking is to get as close to the edge of this here so it's literally just overlocked so I get rid of some of it so it doesn't have that much tension holding things together if you did it from a different bit of fabric then you just fold it over you would find you wouldn't get any of this so much of this gather it depends very much on the fabric as well but this is this is fine right let's go over to the overlocker and finish it off i'm going to pop this under and like i said i'm going to try to get as close to my stitching line as i can so i'm just going to ease this in make sure that you don't catch anything and i've got another marker on here that i'm going to line up with my line there and that will quite literally cut off um, all that nasty business that we've had there and leave me a really nice beautiful neckband Maschine eine Markierung, die ich in Einklang bringe mit meiner Stichlinie hier und ich strecke das Ganze auch ganz schön hier nähe. Und dadurch schneide ich jetzt eine ganze Ecke ab, auch gerade das, was es so fest gemacht hat, was toll war zum Annähen, aber jetzt wollen wir das abschneiden. at the end and we have got a beautiful neckline here I think this is gonna look so good now we need to give this a jolly good press of course I'm just gonna press this down the seam shows into the dress of course oh, it's really nice by the end of it you don't even see all this like you thought oh i had to hold it in so much you saw all that gathered bit so when you're doing this at home and you fear for that or oh, maybe it's too much gathers it won't be it's like it's stretch stuff so if you do it too wide what will happen it's it will just not look good right it will be like all stretchy and horrible so now i'm going to give this a good press from the top and now you know why most t-shirts at the back of this have got a bit of binding but we don't want to over complicate this because you can't see it when you're wearing it so look at that that is beautiful now we're done with this really the only thing that you might want to do now is top stitch it um all the way around and you can do i'm never quite sure whether that's such a good idea so, so my problem with doing that is that if i do this on there and I haven't got the exact nice thread that it won't look so good if you have a twin needle or a cover stitch this all would look a lot better but um, with a normal stitch it's just not possible to get it right totally so I'm gonna leave it because it's better to have something that uh, looks okay than somebody come in there and saying oh did you make that yourself because you couldn't hold your stitches or that straight um, so I'm not gonna do it so let's go and have a look. I mean, you've already seen it because it's in the thumbnail, but um, when I make these videos, I don't actually know yet. <laughs> so let's try it on and have a look. And here comes my beach dress. This is much more appropriate for LA. I can wear this just over my swimsuit when I go to the beach here. 
and I've got a neckline which isn't strangling me up here. That was so horrible. I love it. I could have had it a little bit longer maybe, but I'm um, a bit overzealous there with what I cut off. But still, I really like it. I think it came out really well. So now you know how to shorten one of those hems and also how to change the neckline. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and you find all the info about Fashion Quality in the box.